Hi, and welcome back. This week we're talking about time. Before we start, you might realize something a bit different. Back to wearing some of my crazy shirts. The weather's been a bit hot lately. I thought I'd bring back my crazy shirts. I've got all sorts of crazy shirts lined up. Comment below, I've got avocado shirts, I've got pelican shirts, I've got flamingo shirts, I've got all sorts of shirts. You tell me what shirt to wear, you know, I'll wear it. If it means you watch the video, I'll do anything. So, today we're talking about time. Yesterday we talked about 24 hour time and 12 hour time and converting between both. Today I wanted to do a concept which is a little bit different, but it's a concept that gets kids very, very confused when doing NAPLAN. In NAPLAN they might say something like, um, the train got to the station at 9.38 and took an hour and 42 minutes to get to its play, to its journey destination. What time did it get there? That confuses kids so much. The concept of time and how much time has elapsed, which means how much time has gone and what's the new time now, is a really, really tricky concept. All right, You might be the sort of person who just gets it. Someone says it took three hours and 30 minutes and you're like, yeah, I get it. I know what time that is. But your brain might be the sort of thing that gets confused. So today I want to show you how to use a number line to get you used to it. And then slowly with number lines, we get used to it more and more. And then we can start to do this part in our head. But up until now, if you're at a test, why are you bothering trying to do something in your head when you can make sure it's correct and do it written? Okay, it's really, it's more important to do it properly than to try to be really quick and make a mistake. So what I mean by elapsed time is how much time has occurred between two events. So if you had an event starting at 9.30 and it ended at 11.46, how long did that take? Now this is easy and it's gonna get harder, but the one thing I wanna look at is there's different ways of doing it. Now you might be the sort of person, we're gonna use the jump strategy, who wants to jump forward two hours and then jump forward the rest, but you might be the sort of person who might not find that very easy. So you could jump forward an hour at a time. So you could go 9.38, no, sorry, 9.30, 10.30, 11.30, right? And each of those was an hour, right? We're now at 11.30. And now we've got to jump forward to 11.36. Sorry, 11.46, so we jump forward 10 minutes. And then we can, now we're at 11.40. Sorry, 11.40, and we can jump forward six minutes, okay? Now you can see here that it's jumped forward two hours and then 10 plus six, how long did it take between two, these two things? Two hours and six minutes. Now you might have been the sort of person who when you, I'm gonna jump below just to show you. You might have gone 9.30, 11.30, and then done two hours, and then jump forward 16 minutes. If you're comfortable doing that, that's great. But sometimes if it goes past like 12 o'clock, it can get quite confusing. If something happened at 11 o'clock and it had six hours, you knowing to jump six hours to five o'clock sometimes can be tricky. So jumping one hour at a time, there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you have to do, it's what you have to do, all right? The next one says it starts at 10.46 and ends at 3.13. How long did the event go for? This one's a little bit trickier, a little bit trickier. But what I want you to do is I, there's multiple ways you could do it, but what I would like to do is jump forward from 10.46 to get to the nearest hour first. How, I wanna to get to that nearest hour clean. So from 10.46 to 11 o'clock, you could, it depends. Like I would jump like this and go 14 minutes and now we're at 11 o'clock, right? I would jump from 10.46 to 11 o'clock, but if you need to jump from 10.46 to 10.50 and then from 10.50 to 11 o'clock, you can also do that. So let's go. Let's jump from 10.46 across to 11 o'clock. Now we're at 11 and it finishes at 3.30, 3.13. So we go, so that's 14 minutes, 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. Now all these are hours, right? Now we're at three o'clock and we just need to jump forward now 13 minutes. So now you've got, it's really hard. It's really confusing the way that it's done in terms of like, I'm trying really hard, but it's sometimes difficult. So we've got one, two, three, four hours there. And then we've got 14 minutes here and 13 minutes there, plus those two together, 27 minutes. Okay, so that might be confusing. We're gonna go back through that again later. The next one, 
what I want to do is I want to say there's no end point. Someone says the party started at 2.51 and it went for three hours and 33 minutes. What time did it finish? When it has to jump to the next hour, with the, it's really difficult. So what you might want to do first is you might want to just go forward, the, the count the three hours forward first and then count the 33 minutes. So you've got 2.51, so you can go, I've got to go three forward. So you go one, two, three, three hours. So that's 3.51, 4.51, Right, and then you might say to yourself, I need to now go forward 33 minutes. Now it depends, you could go forward three minutes and then 30 minutes, or you might want to just jump across and say, nine minutes, took me nine minutes to get to six o'clock. Sorry. So now you need to say, if it took me nine minutes to get to six o'clock, then I need to do 33, take away nine, equals 24. So now I'm left with 24 minutes left. From six o'clock, the end time is 6.24. So the party finished at 6.24 p.m. I get that. I can, I, I can sense when I'm teaching it, even though it makes sense. I can sense that it's difficult. I really can. It's not always easy. And this is why it tricks so many people up. So, let's do one more and let's do it, let's say it's party side at 3.47 p.m. and finished at 7.13 p.m. Okay, remember what I said first. You could be, the, you could be able to just jump forward by yourself and just do this in your head and that's great if you can well done but I feel like it's gonna be better for us to jump forward to the nearest hour we want to get to the nearest hour first so to get to the nearest hour I need to get 13 more minutes okay so I'm just gonna jump forward 13 minutes and the nearest hour is four o'clock now that I'm at four I can jump forward hours at a time so to get to here I go five o'clock six o'clock seven o'clock and I'm jumping forward an hour at a time. Now I'm at seven o'clock. I know my last jump is just 13 minutes. And now I can just plus up my jump. So I've got one, two, three, three hours, 13 plus 13, three hours, 26 minutes. Three hours and 26 minutes is how it took me. Now you might have been able to do it without doing that. You might have been able to go and go 3.47, okay, yep, three hours later would be 6.47, that's three hours, and then jump forward, oh, 13 minutes plus 13 minutes is 26. You could do it like that too. But for a lot of you, I feel like jumping on a number line will be the best way to do it. Okay, because it's easy, especially when you're jumping to the next hour or if something's got like 47 minutes or something like that, it can get quite confusing doing it in your head. Holding all the information in your head with something like time is difficult. So write it down, it will make it so much easier. All right, try to use the number line, jump to the nearest hour, then, then do your, all your hours and then jump the rest of them. Okay, I hope that's been helpful. I hope it's been useful. All right, please let me know what you think of it. If you're having trouble with it, please comment because I can make another one and go through it a little bit more. All right, and also make sure you comment about what shirt you want to see next. All right, thanks for watching.